Alright, in this video what I want to do is sort of go through gathering weather data. A lot of students uh, have questions about where should they go, how should they approach gathering weather data. What I'm not doing right now is going into weather theory and, and that type of thing. That That's another lesson, but right now it's just where do you go to get the data you need to make a good decision on your flight. Usually, and I'm going to show this, this is going to be a real quick little uh, tutorial here for you, but I'll show you kind of how I approach it. Basically, I start broad and go narrow. I start with the largest overview I can get, and then the closer I get to my flight, I begin to sort of narrow down and get more detailed information. So the first place I'll go is to the Weather Channel. Everybody knows where that is, and uh, it's easy to, to manipulate and to uh, get the information you need. So I'm here in Nashville, so I just bring up Nashville, and let's say that I'm going today on a flight to uh, Cincinnati. And uh, I would have, a couple of days before the flight, been watching weather.com, watching for weather patterns, what the long-range prediction is going to be over in the five-day forecast. Um, the closer, obviously, you get to the day of your departure, the more uh, the weather forecasts become a bit more reliable. But I can see basically, you know, a five-day outlook of what the weather is going to be. And if you come, if you look, come down here on the details, you can see the what the expected winds are going to be, and uh, of course the chances of rain and what type of precipitation you're going to have. So this is a really good tool for just getting a basic overview. So let's say today, if we were going to fly on this imaginary trip to Cincinnati, you know, here's what I would be looking at: these this uh, basic daily rundown, and you can click on it and begin to see more in the hourly forecast of what you can expect um, each hour of the day or so. So there's the temperature line and here is our precipitation and, and cloud forecast. Okay, so that's very basic. Now within 24 hours of my flight I'll drop over here to the uh, NavMonster which I really like. It's free. It pulls weather data from aviation weather sources. It's also fairly easy to navigate and so if we're going from uh, John Toon to uh, let's say Lunkin in uh, Cincinnati then I just ask it to map the route and the first thing it brings up for me are my weather reports which is great. It shows me what the current weather is in Nashville. Um, BNA is Nashville International. It's the closest reporting station to John Toon, where I'm flying out of. And it shows me uh, basically my winds and ceilings and so forth. Notice that we've got definitely something going on here because at 12 p.m. today, this is what we're expecting. And then here by morning, uh, we can see that the ceiling has dropped a bit. we got a scattered 2,500 layer uh, there and wind is picking up with a stronger southerly wind. Um, Lunkin, um, you begin to see also a pattern here that today you still have that southerly wind with a few at 5,000 and gradually you see this wind picking up and ceiling um, dropping as you go through the day. So you know that some weather is moving in there. The other thing I like about NavMonster is it gives me root METARs and root TAVs so I can see the weather along my route. So here's Bowling Green, Glasgow, Kentucky, um, uh, Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky, and Covington, and then Lunkin. So you can sort of see the, what the weather is like now, and then you can go down here and see what it's um, predicted to do on the terminal area forecasts. So this is a very helpful um, website. And then as you come down, you can also see here, according to that ground track from, from Toon over to Lunkin, you can see what the basic outlook is for the wind. So I know that I've got a 27-knot tailwind. So it looks like I'd, if I had an option, I'd probably stay a little lower because I've got a higher tailwind. If, if I wanted to go a little bit higher, I'd still have a nice tailwind but a nice 30 knot tailwind coming out of Nash Nashville at that time. So we can kind of roll through here and begin to see more and more of the weather from the area forecasts and a map. Now when it's time to actually move in close to the flight, I'll jump over to the Aviation Weather Center and um, I can see more uh, of uh, the weather patterns. One of the things I'm always 
looking at one of the first things I'll look at are the prog charts the low level prog charts and sorry I should look at the surface prog charts what I want to see and I can see what it is right now and then if I come up here and start clicking I can see um, 12 hours later 24 hours later 36 hours later you can watch that cold front as it sort of moves along towards uh, where I'm at here in Tennessee so and if, if I back out of it, it goes backwards, but you can kind of get a good idea of what the weather is going to do. Then the other things I'll look for, I'll be sure to check icing on the southeast here. See any icing reports. You can also check pie reps, especially as I get close to my time of departure. I want to check pie reps around um, Nashville. I don't have any. If I want to check around Lunkin. I can check there and there here's a pie rep here that comes up from Lunkin. So very helpful information you can get. And this is the most detailed and the and obviously because it's the NOAA based aviation weather center, this is the when your your kind of last stop for the most detailed information. So anyway, that's how I look at my weather, that's how I, I pick it up and uh you know there's a lot more detail that goes into it and and uh, you have to have a strong knowledge base of weather theory uh, as you go through your training that'll help you but basically I start wide and narrow in a little bit more and then finally I end up here getting the most detailed information I can closest to the flight so I hope that's helpful and if you have any questions feel free to shoot me an email chris at myflightcoach.com and be sure to check out the website myflightcoach.com thanks a lot